five great pieces of financial advice that I will always make sure that my children follow as a non-negotiable, speaking as a financial planner with over 20 years experience. This is Sugar Mama TV. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am financial planner, Canna Campbell. And for those of you who don't know me or not familiar with my channel, I'm all about empowering, educating, and inspiring you to help make sure that you make great decisions with your hard earned money and help create a sense of financial harmony in your world. Now, whilst I'm a financial planner with over 20 years experience, I'm also a mother. I have three children, all of which are IVF babies. I have Rocco who is 10 turning 11. I have Apple who is four turning five and I have Tiger who is two turning three. Now we talk about money in our home all the time but we talk about it in a very empowering way about how money can give you choices, it can allow you to help people, it can give you opportunities and about the sense of always coming from a place of financial resilience, independence and empowerment but always backing it up with financial education. So today I wanted to share with you five pieces of advice that I will always instill in my children as a non-negotiable. Now, as you hear these, you might like to start having conversations with your children about this, or in fact, you might even want to start applying these rules and principles and ideas in your own world after getting advice from a financial planner. So let's waste no time at all. And let me share with you these five great pieces of advice that I will make sure my children follow. Number one, investing. Investing is something that should always be a part of your everyday world. In fact, your investment plan should actually be included in your budget. The reason why I think investing is so important is savings only gets you so far. Yes, savings is great for those short to medium term needs, but if I want my children to make sure that they are financially strong, resilient and independent, I need their money working for them as effectively and as efficiently as possible. And this is the criteria I recommend for investments. Number one, they be two dimensional assets. That means assets that grow in value, which is capital growth and investments that pay a passive income stream, such as rent or dividends. They must have a combination of the two for maximizing their wealth creation journey. The second criteria within the idea of investing over the long run is to reinvest that income for as long as possible delay tapping in or taking or spending that passive income. You see, when you can reinvest that income, it's excluding tax and fees, you help maximize those opportunities for compounding growth to work its magic. Now, for someone who is young, this is really important and something that is actually very realistic because if they have a job, whether it be a part-time job or a full-time job and they say, living at home, they're in a situation where they can afford to reinvest that income. And knowing that you are going to eventually be building up a multi-million dollar investment portfolio is a great motivation to take control and reinvest that income. And then the third criteria when it comes to investing is focus on your passive income, not what the portfolio is actually worth. The media is very clickbait driven. Sometimes those headlines are very dramatic and it can create or trigger knee-jerk reactions that quite often come with regret. We see something as a headline and we think, oh my gosh, the share market is crashing, I need to sell everything. But in fact, the next day or the day after it's back up or it's even stronger. I think it's so important that when you're looking at your investment portfolio and for my children that will eventually take over their own investment portfolios is that they focus on what their money on their portfolio is paying back to them. If they can see that their passive income is consistently growing over the long run, that's all that really matters. Of course, you must consider diversification, but if their portfolio is consistently building up its passive income through dividend reinvestment and even better than contributing to their portfolios, fantastic. That's really all that matters because the more passive income you have in your life, the more financial freedom and independence you have. So to recap, two-dimensional assets such as international shares, domestic shares, and property, reinvest all of that income for as long as you possibly can. Even better, regularly contribute to that investment portfolio, even if it's only a small amount. And three, focus on the passive income not what that portfolio is worth because it doesn't reflect the true value of that portfolio. 
It's just white noise. Number two is to enjoy spending your hard-earned money only after you have prioritized your investment needs. For me, it's really important that I teach my children the importance of investing over the long run, even if it's only a small amount. But I also wanna make sure that my children enjoy spending their hard-earned money. We come here with nothing, we leave with nothing. In the meantime, I wanna make sure that they don't worry about money and they're setting themselves up in a smart, intelligent, proactive way. So what I recommend for my children, particularly Rocco is, he's a lot older, is that when he has some money, before he goes and spends it, he puts a little bit of a side so that we can put it towards his share portfolio. By creating that mindset and that habit, that will hopefully cover him and serve him for the rest of his life. So he's able to enjoy spending his money guilt-free, knowing that his money is also working for him at the same time time enjoying the best of both worlds number three is to never feel guilty about spending money your hard-earned money on these four areas number one travel the investment of travel within yourself is priceless what you get back when you explore different countries and explore and understand different cultures is priceless never feel guilty about spending a whole pile of money on travel in fact one of my biggest regrets is that i didn't travel as much as i did when i was younger but that's okay i can make up for lost time and do lots of traveling now also education the investment of education is priceless because the more you can invest in yourself the more educated and informed you can become obviously backed up with life experience the more value and of greater service you can be to our universe number three never regret about spending money on your health whether it be a personal trainer, very expensive scan or test, a particular course or workshop or sporting equipment or even a skiing holiday. Never ever feel guilty or embarrassed or ashamed about investing in your health, especially your mental health. Health is wealth. We can't really enjoy our money if we don't have health behind us. We need to make sure that we have the vibrancy, the energy, the focus, and we can physically move our bodies amongst all these opportunities that the world presents us. And then number four, never feel guilty about experiences. Good experiences, bad experiences. The more experiences we can have in our lives, the more open-minded we are going to be. The more we're gonna learn about ourselves, the better, the deeper the relationship we're gonna have within ourselves, which is all part of overall holistic wealth. So never feel guilty about spending money on travel, education, experiences, and your health. All right, lesson number four that I will always instill in my children is emergency money. We are not resilient. There are so many things that can happen out of the blue, and even worse, there are things that can happen simultaneously or consecutively, where you have an emergency, 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 back after back after back. This is why you must have emergency money, and there is no magical formula that tells you how much emergency money you should have. But I will always insist that my children have a certain amount of money that is right for them and their situation, put aside in a separate dedicated savings account so that should something happen, their financial situation is protected to the best of their ability. Yes, there may be some damage, but at least that damage is quarantined and fixable and they can get back on their feet again. And in the meantime, whilst they have that emergency money, they can feel safe and secure. That is definitely a non-negotiable. And something that I will always be in their ear checking, hey, do you still have this emergency money set aside? I'm gonna be that totally annoying mum. Now on that note of emergencies, that also includes personal insurances. Making sure that my children have number one, income protection, number two, a trauma cover policy, and then of course, TPD cover and life insurance. And this will be essential the moment they have a full-time job. I want my children to know that no matter what happens to them from an accident or an illness, that they have a financial safety net in place that allows them the space and opportunity to focus on their health rehab or recovery, whatever they may need to get back on track again. And also this will help contribute to a greater sense of safety, security, and stability, as well as a good night's sleep. And as I've shared in previous videos, I took out these insurance policies when I was in my early twenties, when I had a full-time job and I still have those policies today and I would never ever consider canceling them. And then number five, I will always make sure that my children understand the importance of giving back in a sustainable way. Whilst it's great to be able to donate money when someone asks, I also think it's incredibly important when you're in a certain financial position where you've achieved a few financial goals to start giving back have a regular donation plan. Even if it's only a small amount, just do what you can afford to do and feel proud about that. And also when it comes to giving back, never underestimate what you can do with your voice in creating awareness or actually by giving back physically through your time. Even simple things like doing community service, volunteering, taking on unpaid work, 
creating more awareness of a particular charity that touches your heart. I really want my children as they get a little bit older to pick a charity that really resonates with them. And that can become their special thing that they're really connected with and can give money to over time. And the best way for kids to learn is by example. So for me, myself, leading by example. And I myself have a regular donation plan with World Vision, which goes to their 1000 Girl Project, helping young children, particularly girls in Myanmar. And this money helps provide provide education, shelter, food, and clothing. So it's really important that my children, as they create financial freedom and independence for themselves, that they give back the moment they can. Now, thank you everyone for watching today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed this. And I really hope that I've given you food for thought for the conversations to have with your children. Or if you don't have children, you can start maybe looking at applying some of these principles in your own life. As you guys know, I'm a financial planner. So I know what I'm talking about and even better, I practice what I preach. So in the meantime, if you could give this video a thumbs up, I would greatly appreciate it. Of course, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and I will see you next week for more financial education, inspiration and empowerment on Sugar Mama TV.